Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. I'm going to tell you what my favorite piece of meat to make pulled pork with is and how to do it. Well, this is it. My favorite piece of meat to make pulled pork with. I made pulled pork out of almost every cut that comes from a pig. From the shoulder, from the back. And the funny thing is that in the US they call the shoulder the bust and butt. However, there's a big downside to using the bust and butt. And that is its size. Well, you can serve your family pulled pork for at least three weeks. The other downside is that it takes longer to cook. And the last downside is that the bigger the cut of meat, the less smoke flavor you're gonna have. And now I'm gonna show you why this is my perfect piece of meat and how I like to cook it so it gets done absolutely perfect for your pulled pork. This is my favorite cut, the pork neck, otherwise known as the collar. In the Netherlands, we call it procureur. And you can see that the color of this pork is intense red. It almost looks like beef. And that red color means flavor. And I can't stress this enough. A lot of people say, I like beef better than pork because it doesn't taste good. There's almost no flavor in pork. It's like chicken. You haven't tasted the right pork yet. Pork should be red. If you got good quality pork, it looks like this. Red meat white fat and that fat is going to make the whole thing juicy and the red meat is going to bring flavor so now you know how to get the right cut the right looking pork neck and if you know that you already nailed the whole pulled pork thing for 80 percent the rest are just tricks well let me show you how that's done the first step is to get some seasoning on this beautiful pork butt and of course I'm going to make my pitmaster x classic barbecue rub of which you can find the recipe on pitmasterx.com and the link is down below. If you want, you can use an adhesive like mustard or olive oil. I'm gonna sprinkle it on as it is because the meat in itself has moisture enough to make sure that the rub sticks. Now the amount of seasoning that you're going to apply depends on the thickness of the piece of meat that you have. This is a rather large cut, so I'm gonna make sure I'm seasoning all sides and put on a double coat. Now that the seasoning sits on my pork neck, it's time to fire up the barbecue. I'll be cooking on my Napoleon Kettle Pro Grill. The first thing to do is to remove the grill grates. The next thing that I'm going to do is put in a log of beech wood. That's going to be my smoke wood and my heat barrier at the same time. On one side I'm going to put two fire starters. Now I've created an indirect zone and a direct zone. When you're smoking pulled pork you want indirect zone. You don't care about the direct zone. We're not going to be grilling here. So the amount of surface that you need for the indirect zone needs to be as large as possible. And a block of wood that sits right here absorbs all the radiation heat. No radiation heat from the burning briquettes can reach the pulled pork. And to make sure that this is a slow burning fire, I only lit it on one side. And the fire will now slowly burn from one side to the other side. And for that same reason, I chose briquettes. That means my fuel source will last longer and will give off a graduate heat. And this is where it becomes obvious that no radiation heat will reach this area only smoke and hot air. Now you don't see me adding any water to this because I want dry air. The beautiful thing about pulled pork is a little bit of crust on the outside and therefore you need high circulation of air and you need hot dry air. Let's place in the pork neck. There we go. I'm not gonna add the thermometer just yet. The meat will absorb smoke until it reaches a core temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. Until then I have the time in the world to get smoke on it. Now with this block of wood, I'm gonna get a lot of smoke. So probably I'm gonna have enough smoke before we reach that point, but I'm gonna check every half hour to see how far along it is. Let's close the lid and set the vents. I'm gonna leave my top vent all the way open to ensure maximum airflow. I'm gonna close my bottom vent to the last stripe. This is gonna reduce the air intake. Now I know that my temperature will not suddenly rise up too fast and I can keep my eye on it. And once the barbecue hits a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius, I'm going to close the bottom vent even further until it stabilizes. My pulled pork has been smoking now for two hours and I've been checking every half hour. And now I have the outside of my pulled pork looking the way I want to. 
We got a beautiful red crust that we build up. You can actually see that we build up a little bit of smoke color and it penetrated into the pulled pork. That crust is called a bark. Now, of course, you can take it way further than where we are right now, but I like it as it is. It's dark, it has flavor, it's going to be freaking amazing. So it's time for phase two of the cook. Phase two is cooking the pulled pork all the way through until it's done. I want to keep the moisture in. I want to keep that pork as it is because that moisture from the pork means the flavor of the pork is still in. I don't want to expel it. I don't want to lose it. So that's why it's got to come off and it's going to be sealed in one of these aluminum trays. The beautiful pork neck goes into the tray and the next part is optional, but I like it personally very, very much. It's just a little bit of apple cider. Take a good quality apple cider and just about two to three tablespoons will do the job. And I'm sticking in a thermometer to make sure I got my temperatures right because I'm looking for that 92 degrees Celsius. And then I'll seal it off with aluminum foil. And I'm trying to create an airtight seal so that I won't lose any moisture. And basically this pulled pork is going to be steamed in its own moisture. That's the best part of it. This way you're never going to end up with dry pulled pork. And now you have two options. Either you're going to put this back on the barbecue or you're going to stick it in the oven. Of course, I'm going to put this on my barbecue because I already have it running and hot. But before I do, I want to check the state of my charcoal. First, let's get the grill grade out. And as you can see that in my two hour cook, I've almost run out of briquettes. My guess is that with a small piece of pork like this, Another fresh batch will just do the job. And as you can see, the smoke wood didn't burn down completely, so I can still use it until the end of my cook. Grill grade goes back in, my tray with the pulled pork goes in, and that's going to take away the flames. Of course, I'm still gonna have my smoke, but that's not gonna do anything because the pulled pork is in the tray. So we got everything set up to make it to the finish line. Little side note here is that the core temperature of the meat is running at 62 degrees Celsius, which is not all the way up to the 70 degrees Celsius that I mentioned earlier, where the meat stops taking on smoke flavor. So we're well within the limit and we have our beautiful bark. In the end, the whole cook only took five hours until I got the notification on my phone saying that the pulled pork was done. And now we're here to take a look at it. There we go, whoa. And that is a big bonus. Only five hours and you got pulled pork looking like this. Beautiful cooler bark. Look at that ajou sitting at the bottom. This looks absolutely freaking amazing. And I know I cooked it to perfection because I got my thermometer in tell me that the reading is right. This can only be good. Let's shred it up. Right there, beautiful smoke ring. I got bark on the outside and it's super, super tender. Just squeeze it and it falls apart. That's how your pulled pork should be. Just work it with your hands, shred up those long strains. And this is why I like to work with a tray like this. All of that moisture that comes from the pork and it tastes so freaking amazing. A little bit of that vinegar and of course, some of that rendered down fat. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. pulled pork like pulled pork should be in only five hours. And in the end, the pulled pork soaks up all of that gravy that sits in the bottom. And look at this. This is magic. This is what the hype is all about. Mm. Of course, I'm gonna need something to go with that pulled pork. And I'm starting with three tablespoons of mayonnaise followed by three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon of mustard, a tablespoon of white sugar, a teaspoon of ground pepper, a teaspoon of salt. Mix that up. Ooh, and that is a whole white cabbage. Of course, I need to chop it fine, but with a thing like this, so hard, so tough, you're gonna need some special tools. And that's why I'm gonna use my Santoku forged knife. Now this knife I've chosen for a reason because it's big enough to cut the whole cabbage through in one cut. And that is important because we're talking about your safety. If you have your knife on this thing and it slides away like that or like that, your hand might be here and you might lose a finger. That's why you gotta make sure that your sharpest knife, your sharpest knife, 
You gotta make sure that you're sharp as knife. How the turntables. There we go. Let me show you what I mean. A little pressure with the hand, a good grip, and then all the way through. Now the second reason that I chose this Santoku knife by Forge is that I wanna slice this up real thin. Thin means a sharp knife, quick action. Basically, you're shaving off the edges of the white cabbage. Take out the big chunks and make sure you're left with beautiful strings of white cabbage. The cabbage goes into the bowl, mix it up, and then you make yourself a delicious coleslaw. Oh, one more test. Mm, absolutely perfect. That's the job of the coleslaw. Just make the pulled pork look good. Let's build it up. A bun, some coleslaw, pulled pork, and one of my favorites, some chili sauce. And there you have it. The tastiest bun you've had all year. How do we, how do we, how do we, how do we, well, let me tell you how. Spread your arms out. Make sure that that sandwich is straight to the floor. It doesn't touch your shoes, so you're gonna have a wide stance Put your butt backwards and then, then spread your mouth like you're an anaconda. There we go. Mm.